uh, let's arrange these compounds in order of increasing acidity. The problem here is to arrange these in order of increasing acidity. Uh, so far is right. So hex means six carbons. Correct. Oh, no bond, no double bonds. That's right. So this is not a benzene anymore. All right. Um, okay. Let's see here. And incidentally, while you're at it, I think you left out the double bonds over here. Like phenol should have the double bonds because this is benzene based. So one thing we, we need to watch out for is just because this is a chapter about benzene doesn't mean every single molecule is benzene. This is just a normal ring. An alcohol. So as you saw, the first step is to actually draw the structures. We don't want to just picture these in our heads. We should actually draw the structures. Most acidic, moderately acidic, and least acidic. That sounds good. Why is, uh, why is this compound more acidic than this compound? Because it has the ability to spread through resonance, it can spread that uh, negative charge throughout the ring. That's right. After, uh, if it lost the proton, it could stabilize its negative charge by resonance. Very good. Um, and then why is this more acidic than this compound? Because of the uh, electron withdrawing chlorides at the O and P position. Is uh, if it is deprotonated, the hydroxy, it is going to be the uh, negative charge is going to be better stabilized throughout the ring because of the electron drawing effect of right. the chlorines. These are electron withdrawers, so they also help to stabilize the charge. And since we're, um, in, we don't, it doesn't even so much matter in this case that they're at the O and P positions because we're not comparing it to anything else. If we were comparing this to something else where the chlorines were at the M position, then we could look at that as well. Okay, so you're right. That's a good application of what we just went through. So this is the most moderate, and then this is the least acidic. Again, alcohols, normal alcohols are not really very acidic. Phenols are more acidic than a normal alcohol, although still not as acidic, say, as a carboxylic acid, maybe. All right, well, I think that's a good uh, coverage, then, of uh, the acid-based properties, then, and ranking things in order of acidity. Thank you. Take a guess as to what might happen first here. A deprotonation of the hydroxy. 
which hydroxyaromatic the, um, well, let's see here. That sounded good. The deprotonation of the hydroxy on the uh, phenol. Yeah. We were just talking about how negative charges would like to get right off of regular hydroxy oxygens and onto a phenoxide oxygen. Uh, something else that you might worry about is that we might try to do an SN2 just by attacking here, or maybe, uh, yeah, try to do an SN2 over here. There might be, uh, there might be some extent of that. Uh, but in any case, at this point, we're not focusing on that reaction. We're focusing on that acid-base reaction that happens first here. So uh, generally speaking, acid-base reactions are fast, faster than substitutions. So maybe this would happen first. Let's draw the mechanism in the intermediate from that step. Are you doing that? Okay. Good. Good. And then we'll have to try to figure out what might happen next. Now we've got this. Well, can we think of any reasonable reaction that might happen between this new intermediate and this substrate that we haven't done anything with yet? Um, let's just take a guess as to what might be a reasonable reaction between this and this. could attack the uh, carbon next to the chlorine? Yeah, that's right. Well, what type of mechanism are you thinking about happening there? There's a name for that. Um, an SN2? Yeah. yeah, you can just do an SN2. This looks like a good SN2 nucleophile. Here we have a primary carbon with a decent leaving group. So we can just do a normal SN2. Well, let's draw the, uh, show the mechanism and the product from that step. Good. I'm glad to see that you put in some numbers here. We know it's always helpful to put in some numbers to avoid adding or dropping carbons. One thing that might save you some time is just to use pH for the benzene ring over here. That's just a matter of taste. And if we just take our time, the arrows should tell us who's connected to whom. This arrow tells us that the oxygen is forming a bond to the number one carbon, which is losing of the bond of the chlorine. And the charge is the oxygen is losing the negative charge and the chlorine is gaining the negative charge. Then the CH2 is bonded to the number two carbon, which is a CH, which is bonded to the carbon named number three. And that gives us this product here. This is just a normal SN2 reaction. Very good. And it, is, that, is that considered a, a, an ether? Huh. That's good thinking. Very good. That's the, certainly the question you want to ask yourself. Now we've learned a new reaction, we should ask, what have we made here? Uh -huh. Well, absolutely. This is an ether. This is what we could call an alkyl aryl ether. Okay. Incidentally, something I should have mentioned before, I, I think you know what an alkyl group is. An alkyl group is just kind of a normal, boring carbon chain. Something we should have talked about, though, we talked about this a little bit a long time ago when we talked about spectroscopy, is what arene and aryl means. These refer to aromatic rings. These refer to aromatic rings. However, uh, at this point they, um, in the class, uh, unless you're doing a Huckel's rule problem, an aromatic ring is almost always benzene. So we can just kind of think of these as short for benzene. So this would be called a alkyl aryl ether. You can see why this is called an alkyl aryl ether, because on one side of the oxygen, we kind of have a normal alkyl chain. But on the other side of the oxygen, we have the aromatic benzene ring. So it is an ether. It's an alkyl aryl. Aryl? Aryl? Aryl ether. So, like I said, we, I should have already mentioned that aryl and arene refer to aromatic compounds, usually benzene. Well, that's right. So now we've learned a way to make 
basically an aryl ether, a benzene ether. This reaction should look pretty similar to us. Way back in earlier terms, we saw that one nice thing about an alcohol is alcohol oxygens are not very nucleophilic. Mm -hmm. But you can deprotonate them, and then they become more nucleophilic. So we're doing something that we've already learned to do on other alcohols. We can deprotonate an alcohol oxygen so it becomes more nucleophilic, and then we can do an SN2 reaction with that. And it's even easier here because it's easier to deprotonate a phenol alcohol than a normal alcohol. So it's easy to deprotonate this and make it into a better nucleophile and do an SN2. Okay. 